Hey everyone, welcome to a new no-code tutorial for NoCode HQ and today we'll be building um, a simple one-page app cost calculator using Bubble. So basically um, a page that you can display where users can um, enter some features um, and for what platform they want to build their app. So basically a quote estimation or an app cost estimation. And you could use it for all kinds of pricing uh, estimations or quotes, um, basically an online calculator for your service. So what you want to do, you want to create an account with Bubble or log in if you have an account already and create a new app and you'll be shown this pop-up. So let's give our app a name. I'm going to call it App Calculator uh, NoCode HQ and we're not going to start from a template and you can leave the rest blank and let's click on Create a New App. We should be brought into our um, Bubble Editor now. Um, and the application system is open and what we want to do, we want to start with a blank page. Um, and let's also close the assistant. And the first thing I always like to do is go to styles and apply a theme. Um, so basically a theme is applied to all the style elements in your bubble app. And uh, I would like to use, I, I'm going to use the Twitter bootstrap theme now. So let's just click apply and the theme is applied to all these elements. So let's go back to design and let's actually um, decrease the width a bit um, just so it's easier to edit. Um, the page is going to be res responsive either way so the width doesn't actually matter or what width you're going to set but it's just for working with this app. So I'm going to go ahead and go to data now and actually just create one data type. We want to have a data type which is going to be a quote okay and um, a, this quote data type should contain of course the price which is going to be the final price that will be calculated which is a number um, also the email of the user so we can follow up and maybe also um, the name of the user, okay? Great, and let's go back to design and what we're going to do, we're actually going to uh, build our whole application, our whole calculator within one page in Bubble and we're only going to use states to basically measure um, what the user has chosen uh, and also um, just use groups and make them visible and non-visible and by therefore going through the individual steps. So um, let me start off by adding a gradient to this page. So I'm gonna change the background style to gradient and you can choose whatever you like. I'm gonna choose maybe um, like a blue color or something like this and a dark blue here, okay. And let's make that a bit smaller, the page. We don't need such a large page, okay. Great, let's add a title at the top. And the title can always be there. Let's just remove the style, um, center that, make that bigger, make that white also, bold maybe, and um, calculate app cost. Okay, so that's gonna be our title. And the first thing we wanna do, we wanna add a group now. So let's add a group, just drag that here. And let's center this group actually. Okay, make it a bit larger like this. Okay, and let's actually call this group step one. You can change the name by clicking here. We're gonna call this group step one. If you want, you can add a shadow style to it. So let's maybe add a small shadow. Uh, let's maybe make it a bit darker. Like this. Okay, and so we have our step one. You could make it slightly opaque if you wanna do that. So um, just click here and drag it like this to make it op opaque. Uh, I think that looks quite good. And now let's add a title here as well, okay? And this title is gonna say, um, calculate how much, how much it will to build an app using our platform. So let, just, let's just uh, uh, imagine we, ha we have a platform where, or an agency which builds apps and you wanna create an online um, app cost calculator so that your users automatically um, get quotes and don't have to reach out every time. And this calculator calculates how much um, it would, would cost them to build an app with you. So we have our title here. I'm gonna make that bold again. Um, let's just maybe add a subtitle as well. I'm gonna say, this is a tool that helps, that helps you calculate how much it will cost to build an app with our agency, something like this. Let's also center this and um, let's make sure all this is centered, it is. Let's also maybe add an icon. 
Okay, let's center this icon, and this icon should say, um, or should be maybe um, say app or web. No, we have iPhone, smartphone, phone. Yeah, let's use this, and let's maybe change the color and make it like maybe blue. Yeah, why not? Okay, let's also add a button at the bottom. And this button is gonna say, let's actually change the style of this button. Let's make this button uh, yellow. Um, let's remove the border here. We don't want that. And let's, this button should say, let's go. Okay, so we have the first part ready already. I also wanna actually apply a maximum width. Let's check that. And this element, element should be visible on page load. That's an important uh, part. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna simply copy this whole group and paste it okay so we have a second group now the only thing now regarding editing um it's going to be hard because we always have a we have a group which, which, which is visible on top of the other so just for editing purposes i'm actually going to make the initial group step one not visible so we can now hide it using the elements tree and we can just focus on um, the group we're editing currently so let's just make sure they're at the same height okay so this has a height of um it's at 158, so let's do the same here. Let's put that to 158. Let's call this group step two. Okay, and let's add our first question. Our first question is gonna be, um, for which platform do you want to build an app? Okay text subtitle is choose a, a platform below okay and uh, now we also want to add a group and this group should have a state so let's add a group here let's just center that remove all the, the colors okay remove the borders and let's add a state by clicking on this button here add a new custom state and let's call it selected let's have the state type as a text and let's, let's actually call this group um, platform. Okay, the default value is going to be iOS. We're going to have iOS and Android. And we're going to have, let's actually uh, install the plugin material icons. So just go to plugins, search for material icons, install it. Let's go to the design tab again. So I'm going to choose material icons. Let's put that here. Okay. And this is going to be iOS, so Apple. I have that they don't have that so let's use the normal icon then so let's choose apple okay and let's see do we also have android hopefully yep we have android okay um we said the default should be apple of the group platform or ios yeah and let's add a conditional now so let's say when conditional when the group's platform selected state is ios we want this icon to have the color, um, let's say blue, okay? Let's just copy this uh, expression, paste it for Android here, and let's just change the text. Let's say when the platform selected is Android, same thing again, we want the icon color to be also blue, like this. Of course, what we have to do, we want that the user should, uh, should be able to click and change the platform, so what we wanna do as well, when this icon is clicked, let's start at a workflow, we wanna, set the state of the element platform the selected state to ios and same thing for android when this is clicked we want to set the state for uh, platform selected to um to android okay great and again the button should just say continue Okay, and um, let's just do the same thing again. So again, I'm gonna copy the whole group, paste it. Let's make the step two group not visible. So I'm gonna select it and make it not visible so we can hide it now here, okay? And um, I'm gonna call this third group now step three, okay? And this is gonna say, what kind of app do you want to build like this and just gonna say 
choose the type of app and we're going to have the same structure again so again we're going to um, change the name of this group to uh, app type um, the state is again going to be selected the default should be let's say um, a directory okay so that's one of the app types and we're going to add some icons there. so i'm going to delete this i'm going to add a few icons so let's maybe have um, this icon which should be so see it's a directory so ju let's just choose some some uh, icons so again we're going to choose a list the condition is going to be when that when the app type selected is directory this should be the icon color let's also add maybe social network so let's say when the apps type directory is social network okay and let's change the icon to um, this maybe and let's also just have a third icon which should be what should be the third be um, let's say informational just the informational app okay let's change that here as well informational like this and now we have to add the workflows again so I'm gonna say okay when uh, this is clicked we want to set the state again of app type selected to um, directory okay we can actually copy this whole step so we can save some time. Apply the same here. When this is clicked, we want to set the state of selected to social network. Okay. And of course, if this is clicked, we want to set the state to, I think it was informational. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want, you can add a, like a small text beneath each one of them. So let's just add a text here. Uh, directory listings app. Let's make that centered. Okay, just bigger like this. Let's copy this. Social network and informational app like this. Okay, let's add one last step. So again, we have the button continue. And again, I'm gonna make this step three group not visible. I'm gonna copy it again, paste it, okay? I'm gonna position it the same. And I'm gonna make step three not visible. Step three copy is gonna be called step four. Okay, and the title is gonna be um, how many pages should your app have, okay? and um, choose the number of pages. Again, the same thing again, we're gonna, um, let me actually drag it up. We're gonna change the name of this group to pages, okay? The uh, selected default value is gonna be, let's say one, two, three. We're gonna have just the text here. Um, text is gonna say, one to three. Okay. Let's delete all of this. Let's make that really big. Okay. Let's center that vertically. And let's say, okay, again, when the group pages selected is one to three, this text should be underlined. And again, we can uh, copy the same thing. So let's just copy this text. I'm going to center this here. Like this, this is gonna be, let's say, um, three to eight, let's say, and it's gonna be when this is three to eight. And we can't forget to check that, of course, so let's not forget this. And again, I'm gonna copy this, paste that here, and this is gonna be eight plus, so more than eight pages. Eight plus, like this. And again, we just have to add the workflow, so when this is clicked, we wanna set the state, of pages two one two three when this is clicked we want to set the state of pages uh, to three to eight let's just copy that again and when this is clicked we want to set the state to eight plus Great, okay, so that's it. Um, let's actually um, copy the step again. Let's hide step four and let's paste our last 
page, which is going to be, uh, let's call it final. Okay. And um, this is just going to say, congratulations. Here is your estimated app price. Okay. Congratulations. Okay, like this. We're going to remove all of this and we're going to have a text here, which is going to be the app price. Uh, let's remove the conditional and we're going to change that in a second. And let's also add an icon maybe below. Like this. And this icon should be a check maybe. And let's say it's green. Like this. Okay. So we're almost done. We now have to add basically the logic behind our price estimation. So what I want to do, I want to double click on the edge and for our index page, I also want to add a state and this state is going to be price estimation. Okay. And this is going to be a number. Okay. Um, we don't need a default value and this text at the end should be whatever this state is. So we can say, okay, this should be indexes price estimation. Okay. Quite simple. And let's just center that. But now let's actually go ahead and um, create the logic. So first of all, we want to say step one, when the button let's go is clicked, we want to hide our group step one, and we just want to show our group step two. And same thing again, that's, that's really simple. So for step two, when this button is clicked, continue, we want to hide step two, and we want to show step three. When step three continue is click, we want to hide step three. And we want to show step four. And for step four again, when we want when the button is clicked, we want to hide step four. And we want to show um, final. Okay. What we also want to do, we, we want to calculate the app price according to a different states that were selected in all these steps. Okay, so let's say in step two, um, this should be assigned a value of $500. And this should be assigned a value of $2,000 or whatever. So we're going to do that very simply in step four. When the button continue is clicked, besides hiding step four and showing final, we also want to set our price state according to what states were set. So it, that's going to be quite simple. It's going to be a long workflow, but we're going to work with conditions. So we want to say, let's for example say, we want to set the state of index, the price estimation. We want to set it to whatever index price estimation is already. So index is price estimation. Let's say plus $500 only when the platforms selected is iOS. So when the user selected iOS as the platform in step one, we want to add 500 to the price estimation. We can just copy this, paste it, and let's say we want to only add 300 if the selected platform is Android, okay? And as you might remember, the user selects one of those two icons here in step two, and he can either select iOS or Android. Let's go to step three. In step three, we had the uh, uh, options between directory, social network, and informational, okay? So we have three conditional. So let's go back again to um, step four, go to our workflow again, and let's just do the same thing again. So I'm going to uh, copy this and paste. And let's say, let's say we want to add 500 when app types selected is um, directory. Okay. Let's say we want to add um, 1000 when the selected is social network. And again, I'm going to just paste that here. And let's say we, we want to add only 100 when it's informational. So of course the prices here depend on what you want to add. So let's say your the, the price for a social network increases by 2000, you want to add that number. But I'm just going to use random numbers now to show you how, how that should work. So let's go to uh, our next step. So we just chose step three. 
For step four, we have again three options, one, two, three, three, two, eight, and eight plus. So again, let's go to our workflow. And again, it's gonna be quite simple. I'm just gonna paste the same workflow again. And we wanna add, let's say 500 when um, pages selected is one, two, three. We wanna add 1,500 if pages selected is three to eight. And let's say we wanna add a lot, 2,500 if it's eight plus. Okay, great, and that's already it. Our price is gonna be calculated according to what um, values were chosen. Um, however, the one thing I wanna still add, if you remember at the beginning, we added the data type quote, and we wanna collect the information of our user. So I'm just gonna add in final, uh, in the final step, I just wanna add, um, let's make that a bit smaller actually. Um, let's add an input. And this input should say, um, enter your email for follow up information or something like that. And let's actually go to data and let's say we don't need the name, that's unnecessary, we just need the email. So this uh, input is gonna be of type email and let's have a button, okay, like this. Let's make it a bit bigger actually. And this, this should be submit, the button should say submit. And when this is clicked, we wanna create a new thing, we wanna create a new quote and the um, email should be the input, enter your emails value and the price should be indexes, so indexes price estimation value. We wanna reset the inputs afterwards and we wanna show alert, which we have to first create. So let's create an alert. Let's just drag that here, um, make that to a success alert position at the top. And this should say, your quote was, was sent to us. We will follow up soon, something like this. And we just have to add that here in our workflow. So again, let's go back here and we want to show the alert. Your quote was saved after all of these steps. So yeah, that's basically it. One last thing we have to do. We have to make our step one visible on page row because that's the first step that's going to be visible. So let's make that visible. Okay, and I'm just now going to preview our app. Let's see if everything worked out. So I'm going to preview. Okay, great. So we're on our one page uh, website, which looks quite okay. Um, some small issues. I mean, the border doesn't look nice with the shadow. I would actually remove that. And you can obviously um, play around with font and design and all of the icons. But let's actually go ahead and create our first calculation. So I'm going to click on Let's Go. Okay, so it's going to ask us for which platform do you want to build an app. And as you can see, we can switch around between these two icons because by clicking, we're changing the state of this group, which is invisible. And according to which groups, basically which state is set, the icon color changes. So we can switch between iOS and Android. Let's choose an iOS. I'm gonna click on continue. Okay, again, what kind of app do you wanna build? We have three options again, social network, information app, and directory listings. So let's choose a social network. Let's make an expensive app. I'm gonna click continue again. And again, how many pages should your app have? This time we have an underlining, okay? So we can choose again what we wanna have. So let's say we wanna have three to eight pages. Let's click continue. And now the price should be estimated. So let's click continue. Awesome. So we have the text, congratulations. Here is your estimated app price. And it says 3000. Um, and that seems to be correct, okay? And let's also enter our email for follow-up information. So let's say my email is this. Let's just click submit. Okay, the alert is sent, uh, shown and the uh, element is reset. And awesome, we have created um, an app price calculation calculator or an app price calculator um, using Bubble without any code and without any, using any external services. And if we go to our um, editor again under data, app data, under all quotes, you can see we have our first price estimation, which is price 3000 and the email which the user has inputted. Um, one small thing I would change um, for final, I would just add the value here. So if you wanna, let's say it's dollars, so let's just add a dollar sign before. And um, yeah, 
that's basically it. Um, you could play a lot around with all the um, features you want to include, and um, you can play around the design, the fonts, um, the icons, and so on. But uh, in general, that's uh, it. Um, I hope you learned something, and I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial with NoCreHQ. Bye.